Hi there, this is Utkarsh Jain and purpose of this video presentation is to cover reading 16 forward markets and contracts. Now what we saw in the previous reading was that forward contract is essentially in contract, it's an agreement between two parties. The first party which says which agrees to buy is called as long on that particular contract and the party which agrees to sell is called as short on that contract. Now what do they buy and sell? So the quantity is predefined. So let's say in our case we took example of potatoes where we said that quantity was 1000 kgs. The price was pre-specified which was 25 and maturity of the contract is 3 months. So the party which is long agrees to buy an underlying asset in future at the rate of rupees 25 at a pre-specified price at a pre-specified date and pre-specified quantity. The party which is short on the contract agrees to sell at a pre-specified price, pre-specified date and pre-specified quantity and this particular piece of paper is called as the forward contract. So now the first thing that we would discuss is that how the forward contracts are settled. So delivery or settlement of the forward contract. And then we would also like to, we would also try to understand the meaning of default risk and how does it affect the settlement of the forward contracts. Now what does a deliverable forward contract mean? It means that if keeping the same example, if this was 1000 kg, the price specified was 25 kg and this is the long party and this is the short party if short after three months gives thousand kgs of potatoes to mr to the party who is long and long pays 25 into 1000 that is long pays 25000 rupees to short then this type of settlement of the contract would be called as delivery settlement that long received the delivery and short supplied those goods. So we call this as delivery settlement. Now as against this, the alternate way of settlement is, let's assume that price in the market of potatoes actually turned out to be rupees 30. Now what we know is that this contract is more beneficial to the party who is long because it can buy them only at rupees 25. So instead of buying at 30, party B could buy them at 25, so benefit is 5. What short would say is that instead of delivering you the quantity, what I would do is I would simply pay you 5 into 1000, that is I would simply make a payment of 5000 and the contract would be settled. Now from the perspective of long, long would receive 5000 from short. If it wants to buy the potatoes, it can still go to the market. The price in the market is 30 so what long would do is it would take 5000 given by short it would take its own 25000 it would have 30000 rupees and with this money he can go and buy potatoes at the rate of rupees 30 but effectively out of this 30 5 has been given by short so the potatoes are still costing long 25 rupees per kg so this the other type of settlement is called as cash settlement so a deliverable forward contract long will pay a certain amount in our example rupees 25 at a future date to the short who will deliver the underlying asset in our case in our example it was 1000 kgs of potatoes now what is the meaning of default default means that let's say that contract price was 25 this is long this is short now on the date of maturity, on the date of expiry of the contract, the price in the market is let us say 20 rupees. Now the person who is benefited out of this contract is short because now he can sell his potatoes at 25 whereas the price in the market is only 20. But what if Long denies to buy these potatoes at 25? What if Long fails to satisfy the terms of the contract? In that case we say that the long has defaulted on the contract since there was no security deposit that was given at inception when one signs a forward contract there always exists a default risk it's the risk that the other party to the contract will not perform at settlement now this is the first question the party in a forward contract which 
has right an obligation to buy underlying asset is called as now the party which agrees to buy we've already seen that that party is called as long party party which agrees to sell is called as short and there is no such party as receiver in case of a forward contract the short in forward contract this is the next question question number two the short in a forward contract has the right to receive the underlying asset has the right to sell the asset and has right an obligation to sell the asset now number one long is the one who promises to buy and short is the one who promises to sell therefore in this case he will not receive the asset so a is not going to be the answer now we have two options here which says right to sell the asset and right an obligation to sell the asset now what we have to decide is that whether the long has or whether the short party only has a right or whether it has got right an obligation so now see what we need to know is that if the contract price was 25 and if on maturity price turns out to be 15 10 or 5 then these are the scenarios where short is being benefited but if the price turns out to be 30 35 or 40 these are the scenarios where short will have some sort of an obligation he will be forced to sell it at 25 so at inception when the contract is signed short party does not know whether the price would be in this range or price would be in this range and therefore what we say is that short does have a right as well as obligation to sell this con sell this potatoes at 25 so now long will have both right and obligation long will have both of them right and obligation to buy and a short contract will again have right and obligation they do not have a choice to sell so therefore the correct answer here is option c right on obligation to sell the asset next important points that we discuss is the process of settling the contract at expiration and how termination prior to expiration can affect the credit risk okay? and to understand this we will use a flowchart forward contract settlement now it can be settled on expiration that is in our example after three months or it can be settled before expiration now on expiration there are two possible ways of settlement and we just discussed about them that either we can have a cash settlement or we can have delivery in cash settlement if the long is benefited then short would pay that excess amount of benefit to the long and the contract would be closed out and vice versa in delivery whatever is the contract term that long long is supposed to buy and short is supposed to sell that contract would be executed goods would be delivered now let's assume a scenario that the contract is like this where price of the contract is 25 and quantity is 1000 and now let us say that on the maturity on expiration price turns out to be 30 per kg or let us say it is 35 per kg of course now the party who is long is benefited on this contract because something which is worth 35 in the market long party will be able to buy it at 25 now there are two possible ways of settlement if there is a delivery that is to be done so now let's call the part long and this is our short if there is a delivery that is to be done then what will happen is that long will pay to the short 25 into 1000 25000 and short will give to the long 1000 kgs of potatoes now see how long is benefited here is that at 25000 he could buy 1000 kgs of potato now if long does not need these potatoes anymore what he can simply do is that he can he can sell these potatoes in the market and at rupees 35 which is the current market price he will receive 35000 whereas he had paid only 25000 so his benefit is 10000 or the other way of looking at it is that if long says that why don't if long says a short short that why don't you simply pay me 10000 so if short gives too long 10000 and 
if he needs potatoes, he can always use his own 25,000 and get potatoes in the market at 35,000. Otherwise, he can simply have this 10,000 with him. Right. So this is the meaning of cash settlement. This is the delivery. Now, how would the contract be settled before expiration? So again, before expiration, the long or short, the, these people can always go and meet each other. They can negotiate. So let's say that there is a contract. Okay, let's put it on a timeline. Let's say this is time zero. Let's say this is the maturity of the contract, which is three months. Now, at this stage, the contract was signed for 25 kgs, 25 rupees per kg, 1000 kg of potatoes. Now, we are somewhere here. This is the end of month one. And now what suddenly Long realizes is that he made a mistake by entering into the contract. Now he does not either want to buy the potatoes or he thinks that price of the potatoes is going to decrease substantially into the market. So now there are about two months left for the maturity of the contract and Long wants to exit this contract before the expiration. He wants to exit the contract at the end of month one itself. What he can do is he can go to the short and he can negotiate and pay some amount or receive some amount from the short and settle of the contract. So now whether he would pay or receive some amount would depend on how the price of potatoes has been moving in this one month. So let's say that potato when the contract was signed was priced at 25 itself. Now see it is not necessary that the price of the potatoes and the contract price has to be same which means on day zero when the contract was signed it was not necessary that the price of the potatoes on day zero in the market was 25. It could have been anything else but let's say it was 25. Now in the next one month time if the price of potatoes has increased substantially so this is time zero and the price of potatoes by the end of month one is 35. Now we do not know what would be the price of potatoes at the end of month 3. But since it has increased and now people expect the prices to increase. But now Long does not want to remain in this contract anymore. What Long can say to the short is that currently my benefit seems to be about 10 rupees. But we do not know whether this 35 would become 40 or it would become 20 by the end of month 3. So now let us settle off this contract. Instead of paying me 10 rupees, you just pay me 3 rupees, 4 rupees or 6 rupees. It would be a negotiated amount per kg and let's settle off this contract today itself. Right? So this is one way of doing it where long and short would negotiate with each other and then they would settle off the contract. The other way of doing it is that at this stage long can enter into an offsetting contract. So what does it mean? This is time 0, this is 1 and this is 3. The original contract was for 25. We are here. Now the long is supposed to buy 1000 kgs of potatoes 2 months from now at the rate of rupees 25. What long can do is today at the end of month 1 he can enter into a fresh contract. And that fresh contract can be either with the same party or it can be with a different party but this time long will enter into a short size of the contract with a maturity of two months so now what long can do is he can enter into a fresh contract where he will have a right to sell thousand kgs of potatoes now the price at which he will be able to enter into this fresh contract would depend on a lot of other variables into the market but let's say that he could enter into a price which was rupees 20 per contract so what will happen at the end of month 3 is that long will buy 1000 kgs of potatoes at the rate of rupees 25 with the original contract and then with the new contract that he has entered he will sell 1000 kgs of rupee potatoes at the rate of rupees 20 so he will incur a loss of 5 so now one one might think that why would long take such an action and enter into a contract at this stage itself see this is time 0, this is time 3, this is where long is. Now the contract price was 25. What long thinks now is that price of the potatoes which is currently 
let's say about 22 rupees will reduce in the market in the next three months and it would reduce substantially and it would reach at somewhere around 15 rupees this is what long thinks so if the price of the potatoes turns out to be 15 so in that case i will be required to purchase at 25 and my loss per kg would be 10 can i do something so that i can at least reduce these losses so what i'll do is that i will meet either the same party or a new party and now i would enter into a fresh short contract of 1000 kgs of potatoes and now the new price that i get is 20. so what happens is that after two months from today when i'm here i will buy these potatoes at 25 but using my new fresh contract which was short i will be able to sell these potatoes at 20 so that my loss at least would be restricted to rupees 5 per unit which means a total loss of 5000 so this mechanism of offsetting and contract is called as entering into an offsetting contract and of course this offsetting contract may involve credit risk so again what does it mean that let's say a is the long party and b is the short party now what a decided is that it, it wanted to enter into an offsetting contract now what it can do is it can enter into that offsetting contract with b itself so when it does that the credit risk in a way is limited because now a has got long position on one contract and it has got short position on the other contract with b itself but imagine a scenario where a is in a contract with b and let's say a has got long side to mitigate the contract a enters into a short contract with another counterparty c now a is exposed to the default risk with two parties party b and party c and therefore there is a more possibility of default because if a benefits on this contract as against c there is a good chance that c might default or if a benefits on this contract as against b there is a good chance that b might default so if one enters into an offsetting contract with a different counterparty it might increase the amount of credit risk or default risk that exists into the contract